Imagine being able to break into systems, find hidden vulnerabilities, and protect entire organizations, all legally. Welcome to the world of ethical hacking. This isn't just about Hollywood-style hacks. It's about real-world skills that can build you a six-figure career. Hi, my name is Josh, and this channel is dedicated to helping you become a highly paid cybersecurity, ethical hacking, or cloud pro, fast. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing to my channel. And while you're at it, smash that like button for me. I really would appreciate it. Also hit that post notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. In this tutorial, you'll learn everything you need to go from total beginner to pro level hacker. We'll cover every phase of a hacking operation, the tools used by experts, secret techniques that 99% of learners overlook, and how to actually start practicing like a real hacker. Ethically, of course. Let's dive into the full breakdown. Phase 1. Reconnaissance Before writing a single line of code or executing any exploit, the journey of a hacker begins with information gathering, known in the hacking world as reconnaissance or footprinting. This phase is often the most critical, yet the least understood by beginners. It involves collecting as much data as possible about the target without directly touching or interacting with the system. Think of it as digital detective work, scanning the surface from afar, unnoticed, building a blueprint before laying the first brick. The goal is to reduce the element of surprise in later phases and arm yourself with valuable context. One of the most fundamental tools in this phase is Nmap, often known for port scanning, but its capabilities go much deeper it can identify operating system versions, detect firewall configurations, and enumerate open ports along with the services running on them. By running a well-crafted Nmap scan, you're not just probing for open doors. You're building a virtual map of the entire structure. Another essential tool is Shodan, famously dubbed the Google for hackers. While Google indexes websites, Shodan indexes devices, Everything from exposed webcams and routers to SCADA systems and critical infrastructure. If a device is online and improperly secured, there's a good chance Shodan can see it. What makes this tool even more powerful is that it often reveals misconfigured devices that shouldn't be publicly accessible in the first place. And then there's Google dorking, a lesser known but incredibly effective method of using advanced Google search operators to uncover exposed and sensitive information. By crafting specific queries like in title colon index of password or site colon gov file, type colon xls password, hackers can stumble upon misconfigured servers, open admin portals, and internal documents accidentally exposed to the public internet. These dorks essentially transform Google into a passive reconnaissance weapon. Phase 2 Scanning. Hey, sorry for interrupting your video, but I wanted to know, are you interested in building a career in ethical hacking? We created Learn Ethical Hacking from Scratch course just for you, and it's the perfect way to get started. In this course, you will learn how ethical hackers find vulnerabilities in your system, networks, and applications. You will learn hands-on skills like penetration testing, exploiting the weakness in a system and all the tools that hackers use. You will also learn how to stay on the right side of the law. Cybersecurity is one of the fastest growing industries in the world and hackers are high in demand. The global cybersecurity market is expected to reach $400 billion by 2028. There's never been a better time for you to jump in. Ethical hackers earn from 90,000 US dollars to 120,000 US dollars annually. Experts in this field make even more. So are you ready to kickstart your journey into ethical hacking? This course is your key to mastering hacking. We have placed the link to this course in the description. Enroll today and get started 
on a lucrative career path. Now back to the video. Once reconnaissance has revealed potential doors, the scanning phase tests whether those doors are locked, and if not, how they can be opened. This phase marks the first direct interaction with the target. The objective here is to identify which systems are live, what ports are open, what services are exposed, and where the weak spots lie. Enumeration adds color and depth to the blueprint drawn during recon. Nmap comes into play again, but now in more advanced modes. For example, the Hypen SV flag is used for service version detection, an invaluable detail that helps pinpoint software vulnerabilities based on known CVEs. The Hypen SS option performs a stealthy SIN scan, which is harder to detect by intrusion detection systems. To go even deeper, Nmap's powerful scripting engine can automate vulnerability detection, checking for outdated SSL certificates, default credentials, and more. Next up is Wireshark, a packet analyzer often used by network engineers and hackers alike. Wireshark captures and analyzes real-time network traffic, allowing you to listen to conversations between devices. With features like TCP stream reconstruction, you can follow a complete interaction, possibly uncovering usernames, passwords, or other sensitive data, especially if the communication isn't encrypted. Then there's Nessus, a professional-grade vulnerability scanner that automates the comparison of a system's setup against a database of known vulnerabilities. It doesn't just list open ports or running services. It identifies the weaknesses in those services. Nessus can even be configured to perform scheduled scans or tailored assessments based on specific compliance requirements. This makes it an invaluable tool not just for attackers but for defenders too. Phase 3 gaining access. This is where hacking gets exciting and dangerous. With enough data in hand, the goal now is to breach the system. Gaining access means exploiting the discovered vulnerabilities and successfully entering the target environment. But make no mistake, this isn't just about brute force or blind luck. It's about precision. Like a locksmith picking the exact pins inside a lock, a skilled hacker chooses the right technique and tool based on the system's known weaknesses. One of the most comprehensive tools for this phase is the Metasploit framework. It's not just a single tool, it's an entire ecosystem for exploitation. Metasploit includes a vast library of known exploits, payloads, and post-exploitation modules. A well-known example is exploit slash windows slash smb slash ms17 underscore zero one zero underscore eternal blue, an exploit used against unpatched Windows systems. Combine that with Meter Preter, Metasploit's advanced payload, and you've got a live remote shell on the target, complete with file access, process migration, keystroke logging, and more. SQL Map is another powerhouse tool, specifically focused on exploiting SQL injection vulnerabilities. With a single command, it can detect injection points, extract database schema, retrieve stored passwords, and even access server file systems, all automatically. If a login form or a search box isn't properly sanitized, SQL Map can turn that flaw into full control over the database. Next, there's John the Ripper, a password-cracking utility that shines once you have hashed credentials. John supports dictionary attacks, brute force, and hybrid methods. If configured with GPU acceleration, it can test millions of password combinations per second. This tool becomes particularly useful once access is gained and hashes are dumped, especially from databases or operating systems. Phase 4. Maintaining access. Gaining access is just the beginning. Any skilled hacker knows that a one-time entry isn't enough, especially if the objective involves prolonged observation, deeper infiltration, or future exploitation. This is where the phase of maintaining access comes in, often referred to as persistence. The goal is to create hidden pathways back into the system, ensuring the attacker can re-enter at will, silently and undetected. One of the most well-known tools for persistence is Cobalt Strike, an advanced adversary simulation platform commonly used in red teaming engagements. It allows attackers to deploy beacons, lightweight agents that sit silently on the system, 
regularly checking in with the attacker's command and control server. These beacons are incredibly flexible, supporting data exfiltration, lateral movement, privilege escalation, and task execution across compromised networks. Cobalt Strike is particularly effective because of its ability to blend in with normal traffic, making it very difficult to detect using traditional monitoring tools. Complementing Cobalt Strike is Mimikatz, a legendary post-exploitation tool. While many know it for its ability to extract plain text passwords from memory, Mimikatz goes much further. It can harvest Kerberos tickets, perform pass the hash and pass the ticket attacks, and even generate golden tickets, forging authentication tokens that allow indefinite access to domain resources. Once deployed, Mimikatz can completely compromise a Windows environment if not caught in time. Other stealthy persistence frameworks like Empire and Covenant further enhance this phase. These tools focus on PowerShell-based Empire or .NET-based payloads, allowing hackers to automate backdoor creation, credential dumping, and command execution, all while staying hidden. With scripting support and encrypted communication, they offer high levels of stealth and control over compromised systems. Phase 5. Log Cleaning and Obfuscation No matter how skilled a hacker is, Everything can come crashing down if they leave behind evidence. That's why the fifth phase, covering tracks, is so critical. This phase is about erasing digital footprints, cleaning up tools, and ensuring the attacker's presence and activities remain invisible to security teams and forensic investigators. One of the most powerful toolkits for this job is SysInternals Suite, developed by Microsoft. Tools like sDelete allow secure deletion of files beyond recovery, overwriting the data multiple times to prevent forensic retrieval. Procmon, Process Monitor, provides real-time insight into active processes and registry activity, helping attackers identify which security processes might be watching them. And Autoruns lists every program set to run at startup, allowing attackers to disable or remove traces of persistence mechanisms once their objectives are complete. Another critical step is clearing system logs. On Windows machines, commands like WebTutle CL are used to wipe out specific event logs, effectively removing entries that would otherwise show login attempts, service starts, or system changes. In Linux, log files like slash var slash log slash auth dot log and slash var slash log slash syslog are often targeted. Log cleaning ensures that forensic investigators have no breadcrumbs to follow. For even deeper stealth, attackers may use a technique known as time stomping. This involves modifying the file creation, modification, and access times of malicious files to make them appear like legitimate system files. When combined with hiding tools in system directories or using misleading file names, this tactic makes it nearly impossible to spot tampering through visual inspection alone. Phase 6. Actions on Objectives with access secured and tracks covered, it's time to execute the final phase. Actions on objectives. This is the endgame, the hacker's core mission. Depending on the attacker's intent, this could involve data theft, network pivoting, privilege escalation, or long-term surveillance. By now, the attacker has enough control to move freely within the environment and target what truly matters. Data exfiltration is a common goal and tools like rclone and scp secure copy are often used for stealthily moving files out of the network rclone for example allows transferring data to cloud storage providers like google drive or dropbox over encrypted channels making detection extremely difficult unless network monitoring tools are configured to watch for such outbound traffic if the attacker hasn't already achieved full system control privilege escalation is the next step Tools like WinPs for Windows and LinPs for Linux are post-exploitation scripts designed to enumerate system misconfigurations and weaknesses that can be leveraged to gain administrative or root-level access. These tools scan for everything from writable service binaries to stored passwords and config files. Once escalated, the hacker can access internal documentation, passwords stored in plain text, browser session tokens, proprietary source code, customer databases, and sensitive business emails. Some may even extract documents and messages for cyber espionage, 
while others aim to disrupt systems or deploy ransomware. The scope of this phase depends entirely on the attacker's motive, but the techniques used are surgical and precise. How to practice ethically, without breaking the law. You now understand the full hacking process, but knowledge without practice is useless. Fortunately, ethical hackers can practice 100% legally using the following. Try Hack Me. Great for structured learning paths from beginner to advanced. Hack the box. Real-world challenges and machines you can root. Vulnhub. Downloadable vulnerable virtual machines for offline practice. Capture the flag platforms. Join ctftime.org and compete with other hackers globally. Pro tip, start with web hacking on TryHackMe, then move to hack the box for full machine pounds. Use Vulnhub when you want to simulate a real pen test with report writing. All right, let's take a quick dive into building your ultimate hacker toolkit, the essential tools every aspiring pro needs to master. Here's a mini cheat sheet of tools every ethical hacker should know. You can pause the video and take a screenshot. Now, let's break down your step-by-step -step roadmap to becoming a hacker, the path that turns curiosity into real-world skill. So, how do you actually go from zero to skilled? Here is a clear, step-by-step -step path that will guide you through everything you need to learn, from fundamentals to advanced techniques. Follow this roadmap and you'll build the solid foundation every ethical hacker needs. Master networking. Learn TCP, IP, DNS, and HTTP. Understand ports, firewalls, and routing. Use Wireshark to dissect traffic. Command line mastery. Be fluent in Linux and Windows terminals. Practice Bash and PowerShell. Learn Python, build tools, automate tasks, and write exploits. Use Kali Linux. It comes preloaded with hacking tools and is used by professionals. Understand web applications. Study OWASP Top 10, like XSS, SQLI, CSRF. Take certifications, CEH for fundamentals, OSCP for real-world pen testing. Becoming a hacker is about curiosity, constant learning, and solving real problems. It's about understanding systems deeply and using that knowledge to protect others. You now know the steps, the tools, and how to practice. The only thing left is to take action, whether you want to become a penetration tester, red teamer, bug bounty hunter, or SOC analyst, your journey starts here. If you made it this far, congratulations. You're already more serious than 90% of people who click away after 60 seconds. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments. Check out the video on the right for more content to help you develop your IT career.